I've been doing quite a bit of sewing over the last couple of months, so stay tuned to find out what I've been making. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Tamlin and this is Sewn on the Tine. And I'm here today to talk to you about the things that I've got sewn up recently. Rather than doing this as an August makes and favourites video, which was my original plan, we're now getting so close to the end of September, I thought I'd just call it a recent makes and favourites and I can share everything with you that I've been sewing up recently. So I have got a few things to share with you, but also quite a lot of them are repeats of the same patterns. There are five of one garment, for example. I went a little bit mad on sewing up some basics in some lovely fabrics, so I'll talk about those very soon. But just in case you haven't already, if you could subscribe, that would be really lovely, and then you can join us here on this channel and be with us all the time. <laughs> and also hit the notification bell and you will find out when my next video goes up. So what I'm wearing is actually one of the things that I got sewn up in the last couple of months and it's the Tilly and the Buttons Tabitha t-shirt. So that is a pattern from this one. It's got pattern pieces sticking out there. But this is the Tilly and the Buttons Make It Simple book, which is her most recent book. And the Tabitha t-shirt is one of the projects in there. And it's just a really basic t-shirt pattern. You can make it with long sleeves, you can make it into a dress, but as it comes, it's just a basic crew neck, short sleeved t-shirt pattern made in Jersey fabric. So I have sewn up the dress version before in the past, but never just the t-shirt. And then over the summer, I just started to feel like I wanted a few t-shirts in my wardrobe because I was finding I was wearing jeans or leggings and I needed some tops to go with them. So I made one to have the t-shirt and then just went on a bit of a roll and made a few more. So the first one I made was this one. I've just pulled this out of my cupboard, so it's not going to be ironed. <laughs> this is the first one I made. And it's in this beautiful galaxy print fabric, which is from Sewisfaction. So it's a cotton jersey and it's just absolutely beautiful. Like the colours in that are just absolutely stunning, aren't they? And I sewed this up completely on the overlocker. I added a little uh, cute as a button label there from Paige Joanna. I did top stitch down the neckband with a zigzag stitch and the hems on the sleeves and the bottom are done with a zigzag stitch as well. But that was my first one, just a straight size five, no alterations, and I absolutely loved it. However, I did think it was possibly a little bit short. So on my other versions, I've added four centimeters, I think, to the length of all of them. So this is one of the others that I made, which is made in a cotton jersey again from First for Fabrics, which I purchased as a remnant a long time ago, a couple of years ago, I think. They don't have this in anymore. And I think I had about 90 centimeters of this, which was perfect for this t-shirt. I had a meter of this fabric, again, perfect for the pattern. Then I made this version, which is in, again, a cotton jersey fabric from Sewis Faction. I just loved that tie-dye fabric. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And, oh, it doesn't have a label in this one. I thought I'd put them in all of them. Ah, I put a label on the outside of this one from Little Rosy Cheeks, which says, be strong, be happy, be you. So that was number three. And then I made another one, which was number four. Again, this fabric was from Source Faction. And it's got a little page drawn a label in there as well. And then the last version I made, I don't have with me to show you, it's in the wash, I think, but it was just a plain white version made in a pointel jersey fabric, which I bought from First for Fabrics. And I bought that specifically to make a t-shirt to layer underneath dresses. So I think I do have a photo of me wearing it underneath a dress, so I'll pop that in. So that was all of my Tilly and the Buttons Tabitha t-shirts. I'm really happy with them. I'm probably not done with that pattern because it's just such a great basic. And I've used so many different fun fabrics that I just really, really like to wear a fun t-shirt. And then I usually tuck it into a pair of jeans or I'll wear it hanging out over a pair of leggings. And yes, I love them. And it's a really quick and simple sew. 
The next make to tell you about was one that I made back in July, actually it was towards the end of July, and it's another Tilly and the Buttons pattern and it's the Sky Dress, which is one of their most recent patterns. They've just released a knicker pattern actually, but the Sky Dress was the pattern before that. And it's just a simple sundress which can be made in different lengths and it's strappy and you can add like bows to the shoulders, which I didn't do with this one, but I just thought it would make a really cute little sundress for the summer. And the fabric I chose for mine was a chambray fabric from First for Fabrics. Just to clarify, yes, I do work at First for Fabrics now. However, I also purchase fabric from them and have purchased fabric from them for a long time. I now benefit from staff discount, which is lovely. <laughs> but if any of the fabric was given to me for free, I would state that. So this is fabric that I bought and it's a gorgeous daisy print chambray fabric. So like a really lightweight denim type of fabric, um, hundred percent cotton. And it was just perfect for this dress. I think I got two and a half meters of this fabric, but I do have quite a bit left over. And that was enough for the mini version, which is the one that I wanted to make. And, or maybe did I get two meters? I can't remember now, but I made the mini version and I didn't add the bows at the shoulders. I found making this dress really quite straightforward. I think again, I went for a size five, which is my usual Tilly size. However, at the point at which you've made the bodice, you try it on and you can take it in at the side seams at that point, which I believe I did. I did bring it in a bit, but it is still supposed to be loose fitting. So it recommends you don't bring it in too much, but I definitely did bring it in a bit. And I did enjoy the process of sewing it up except for the bias binding. So the neckline and the armholes are finished with bias binding. And I made my own using the pattern pieces in the pattern, but they don't tell you to make enough of the bias binding, which is a little bit strange. I think it must just be a mistake in the pattern instructions because it recommends that you cut four bias binding pieces. It's nowhere near enough to bind the armholes and the neckline. So I think I'd done the armholes and then I had nowhere near enough. I had a tiny bit left to try and do the neck band, the neckline. So I ended up using some bias binding from the Specky Seamstress, which had daisies on as well. So it worked quite well, but I just used that instead rather than cutting out more bias binding pieces from the original fabric. So that's just something to know if you were thinking of making that pattern. But I am really happy with the finished dress. I've worn it on its own with nothing underneath. And I've also, well, underwear, <laughs> but I've also worn it with a t-shirt underneath and I really like both looks. I think it probably is more of a summer garment. I'm not sure I'll get a lot of wear out, out of it over autumn and winter, but I'll bring it out again once the weather gets warmer next year. Right, one more Tilly and the Buttons pattern to talk about, and that is the Lotta dress. So this pattern was released last year, I believe, and it's not one that immediately jumped out at me for a few reasons, one of them being I was breastfeeding at the time of its release and it just would have been no good because I couldn't have fed wearing this dress. And I also just wasn't drawn to it massively. I'm not really drawn to this look on the front. It doesn't sort of entice me to make it. However, I did start to see some really gorgeous versions out there and it did start to tempt me. I know Liz, the baker that sews, has made some gorgeous versions and so has Jess from So What If I Sew and I just start to think maybe I should give this pattern a go. So sure enough I decided that I would because it's a really easy simple to make but also easy to wear throw on dress. So First for Fabrics where I work had a new range of fabric that they were getting in. And it's from a company called Voyage, who are known for their interior fabrics. So um, upholstery fabric, curtain fabric, that sort of thing. But they have now expanded into apparel fabric. So fabric for dressmaking. And First for Fabrics, before I started there actually had decided to get a range of these Voyage fabrics in, in cotton poplin. So, Julie, who owns First of Fabrics, asked me if I would like to sew up something using one of the fabrics. So I said, yes, I would love to because I had a look at them and some of them really jumped out at me. The floral prints were really beautiful. So I chose one that I loved and I thought it would be perfect for the Lotta pattern. 
and the Lotta is designed for light to medium weight drapey fabrics, which a cotton poplin isn't really drapey. It is light to medium weight or more medium weight, but it's not drapey. However, it does say the short sleeve version can also be made in less drapey fabrics, such as linen, cotton, lawn, and seersucker. So that's what I went for. I decided to go for the short sleeve version and I made it out of the cotton poplin. It was an absolute breeze to sew, so straightforward. I don't often sew with cotton and my goodness, what a pleasure it is for a fabric to just behave itself, not shift around, do exactly what you want it to do. It was an absolute joy. So I think I'm gonna try and sew with it a bit more often because I just don't sew with cotton and I really should because I enjoyed it so much. I went for the midi length version of the dress and did I put the pockets on the front? I think I did. I think I did add the pockets on the front. Yes, because we all need pockets, don't we? So <laughs> I'm really happy with this dress. I really love the look of it. At the minute, it's actually on a mannequin in First for Fabrics. I took it in to put it on display, but I did enjoy wearing it and I will enjoy wearing it again when I retrieve it from work. But I would definitely recommend the Lotta pattern as a really simple garment to make and a really easy throw on dress to wear and I am planning on making some more. I would like to try it in something a bit more drapey like a viscose and I'd also like to try it in a jersey because I know you can use a jersey for it as well. So yes, really happy with that one. In terms of sizing I made a straight size 5 which is my usual size to make with tilly patterns and yeah, happy with that one. <laughs> The last three garments I made were all using the same pattern again. And it's this one, which is the Friday Pattern Company Grace Top. Now I first became aware of this when I watched Shona from Source Faction and she had made a version of this. And it's not a pattern that had ever, ever caught my eye, but Shona's version was beautiful. And it has a really lovely shape at the back. So it's like a racer back style and I just absolutely loved it. So we got some Friday Pattern Company patterns into First for Fabrics, so I bought this one, and it comes in sizes extra small to extra, extra large. Now, they've now taken this pattern off sale because they're bringing it out in their wider size range later this year or next year, I believe, so you can't actually get this pattern anymore unless you find somebody that's still got some of this one in stock but they're not producing anymore and they're not selling it as a PDF at the moment. So unfortunately you won't be able to get it. But I made a version actually in the exact same fabric that Shona made hers in. <laughs> and then I made another two because I loved it so much. So, let's see, let's get it the right way around. There we go. So this is the version that I made in the same fabric as Shona. <laughs> So this is an art gallery cotton jersey with this really lovely eye design all over. And it's just such a lovely top. It's got a slight high low hem, as you can see. It's got these sort of cutaway shoulders. This is just a facing that folds down into it. And it's just turned over with a simple hem on the armholes and at the bottom. And it's just so straightforward to make and again, easy to throw on to wear. I just wear this tucked into a pair of jeans. I wear it with a strapless bra, so my straps don't show. And then I just tuck it into a pair of jeans and I just absolutely adore it. It's such a great top. So then I wanted to make another version and I made it in this stunning jersey, uh, viscose jersey fabric that we got in First for Fabrics. I purchased this myself, but I just absolutely loved the vibrant colours in this. I believe we've still got the other two colourways left of this. We've got a brown black version and a silver black version, but I think we're all sold out of this one. I will link to them down below though, so you can go and check it out. Now with this one, I was in a bit of a rush to finish it and wear it, and I didn't hem it because <laughs> I just took it into a pair of jeans, so I don't need to, but I might actually just run the overlock around the bottom because as you can see where I've had it in the wash, it has started to sort of fray slightly, which is unusual for a knit fabric, but this has frayed a little bit 
and I think I could just just overlock the bottom just to get rid of that. Um, but yeah, absolutely love that version. I made a size large in both versions, by the way, because that fit in with my measurements and you only need 0 0.9 meters of fabric to make this top, which is amazing. The third version, I don't have with me to show you because it's in the wash, but I made it out of a cotton jersey fabric, again, purchased from First for Fabrics. And I really love this one. It's like a blue camouflage print. I shortened the length of this one by two inches on the front and the back because I took it into jeans. I didn't need all of that fabric at the bottom. So I shortened it by two inches. And actually after I've made it, I thought I should have just got rid of the high-low hem as well and just leveled it off all the way around. But never mind. Next time. <laughs> because there will be a next time as I love it so much. So that was a whistle stop tour of all of the things that I made recently. I've just realized they were nearly all made out of jersey fabric. <laughs> well, two things weren't, the lotter dress and the sky dress and everything else was made out of knit fabric, but that's fine because I like wearing it and it's comfortable. <laughs> so just to share a couple of things that I've really been enjoying recently. I've got out of the habit of writing things down in a journal or a diary. I didn't keep up with that. I got lost off with it and I really need to because I forget what my favorite things were or things that I wanted to mention. But I have thought of a couple of things. The first thing is live music. So live music returned in August, which was amazing. Live music is a huge part of my life. Sam and I met at a music festival. I'm named after a song. Sam's dad is a musician. Like music is just a huge part of our lives and going to see live music is one of our favorite things to do. So throughout the pandemic, obviously there's been no live music and it's been really hard. It's one of the things I missed the most other than hugs, I think, <laughs> was live music. And we managed to see some in August and September. That was really fantastic. So in August, we went down to Oxfordshire and we saw Fairport Convention, which is the band that Sam's dad is in. We saw them perform. So Taylor and I only stayed for the first half because it was an outdoor gig and it was raining. <laughs> but we stayed long enough for Sam's dad to dedicate a song to Taylor, which was really lovely. And then for the rest of that weekend, there was a music festival on at the pub that they performed at. So we went on a couple of the days and saw some of the other bands. It was really lovely, really small, just in a, a pub garden, but it was a really fantastic weekend and just so lovely to see live music again. And then on a completely different scale, this weekend just gone, I've been to two days out of the three days festival that was on in Newcastle called This Is Tomorrow Festival. So Friday I went with a friend and we only really wanted to see the headline act which was an amazing Irish singer called Dermot Kennedy. If you haven't listened to him I please please ask you to go and listen to him because he's just got the most beautiful voice. Yeah he's, he's absolutely amazing and yeah <laughs> I could just sit and think about Dermot Kennedy's voice now for quite a while. But a couple of my favourite songs by him are To All My Friends and Better Days and Outnumbered, actually. Three of my favourite songs by him. So he was amazing, absolutely fantastic and really lovely to be at Big Gig again. And then we went on Sunday. So Sam and I went again with a couple of friends and we went to see the headline act again only, who was Sam Fender, who is an incredible incredible musician, singer from the northeast of England, from Newcastle, and he's just absolutely fantastic. Again, if you haven't listened to Sam Fender, I would urge you to go and check him out, watch his videos or listen to his music because he's really fantastic. His subject matter is really honest and quite deep and quite gritty about growing up um, in this area and sort of the struggles that he went through and his family went through and his friends and yeah he's just amazing and it was absolutely sensational that gig on Sunday was absolutely incredible just being in a crowd of people who were all singing every word to his songs it was just brilliant absolutely loved it so yeah live music is something I've missed so much and it's definitely one of my favorite things over the last couple of months because it's been back and that's making us really happy <laughs> The next thing I wanted to share is something that I've been doing with Taylor. We've only been twice so far, but we go, we're going tomorrow as well. And it's forest school. So 
an ad came up on Facebook for something called Woodland Wanderers and it's like a little forest school for preschool children. So children, as soon as they can walk, then they can go along to this forest school and it's amazing. So it's just nearby in a place called Heaton and it's in the woods and you go and you just do little activities, you let your child explore. So the first week we went, it was just sort of a get to know you session, just let your child explore the area. You know, Taylor was crawling around and walking around and touching the mud and the leaves and the trees. And it was just great, really, really lovely. And then there was story time at the end and we read, we're going on a bear hunt and people did the actions and the voices. And it was just, yeah, it was really, really lovely. And then last week we went and it was a bit muddy. So we put Taylor in his splash suit and his wellies and he played in like a little stream and he played with water and a watering can. And it was just really, really lovely. It's just a really nice thing for him to do and a really nice experience for us to have together. So we have that every Wednesday morning from 9.30 till 11. And I just thought I'd tell you about it and hopefully show you some pictures because it's just been a really lovely thing for Taylor to do. So I don't know if they have other groups around the country that do similar things. I'm sure they probably do, but I definitely recommend you check them out if you've got a little one that might be interested. So it's called Woodland Wanderers and I will leave a link to the group that we go to down below. And the last favourite I wanted to share with you was just a magazine that I've been getting. So I subscribed to Simply Sewing Magazine because they had a special offer on. So you got something like six months worth of magazines for $9.99 or something when I think each one is usually $8.99 on its own. So it was a really good offer, um, but I've been really enjoying it. I really love the content, the articles, the interviews, you know, recognizing people that are in there that maybe I've seen on Instagram or I know from YouTube or things like that. And then you also get two or three patterns with every issue and the patterns are really good. I have passed some of them on or sold them on my Daystash account if I haven't wanted them or if they were duplicates of ones I already had. But there's been some really fantastic patterns in there, like the Mayfair dress by Nina Lee and there's been a Sew House 7 pattern, um, uh, Deer and Doe pattern I think, I Am pattern. So there's just been like some really great patterns included in this magazine recently. And as I say, I've been loving the content. So if you don't subscribe already, I would recommend it, but definitely have a look and see if you can find a special offer because $9.99 for six months of this magazine was an absolute bargain really. But I think I might actually continue my subscription because I've been enjoying getting it so much. I used to get Love Sewing Magazine, but then I went off that a little bit and I'm really enjoying this one for a bit of a change. Right, I think that's it. That was quite, a long one and I feel like I've gone a bit parched <laughs> because I chatted so much maybe I should just have a drink. That's better, I could have done that earlier and I wouldn't have got in that situation. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching, I hope you've liked seeing what I've been making recently. Like I say that is like July, August, like two to two and a half months worth of sewing that hasn't all been done just recently, that's you know, spread out over a couple of months. But yeah, I'm really happy with everything I've made and have had a lot of wear out of all of it already. So that's good. I will leave it there. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. Please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and please leave comments down below. What was your favorite thing that I've sewn up? Have you sewn up any of those patterns? Just have a little chat to me down below. I'd really love to hear from you. Thank you again, and I'll see you again soon in another video. Happy sewing, bye. And I really like, and I've been wearing a lot, all of those things. That wasn't a very good sentence. Wow. <laughs> Maybe what was your favorite thing that I've sewn up? Are you, <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna say. Pattern paper, <laughs> pattern paper.